Before I moved here, I've never used a chainsaw. I couldn't even lift them all for splitting rounds. This is the spot. Yeah, there's one right up here that I had picked out for you there. There's a lot of cedars up in there. Tree falling is a very dangerous, dangerous occupation. You got to remember that saw is not your friend. It's not going to watch out for you. Stuff. Mary, you gotta have your saw flat. All I can think of is that tree's coming down on me. Curly, it wants to go the other way. It's starting to move. Keep going, Mary. Don't stop. That tree can bite you back in a heartbeat. Cut fast. <laughs> Cut fast. Keep going. Hey, you might not live to tell the story. Don't stop. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. I am not ready for winter at all. Things go in threes, and we had three easy winters, so I think this year we're going to get slammed. For the people of Southeast Alaska, the keys to their future often lie in the lessons of their pioneering past. For seven-year resident Mary Miller, surviving the long Alaskan winter requires planning for the future. Today, this means stocking up on firewood. I'm not comfortable with what I have here. It's definitely not going to get me through the winter. To gather a sufficient supply requires Mary to add a fundamental but particularly risky skill to her arsenal of talents. I purchased a new chainsaw this summer, but I've actually never cut a tree down. And uh, I want to be able to do it myself rather than have to barter with someone to get me my wood. I want to be more self-sufficient but it's very dangerous falling trees. I got to learn how to read the trees and which way they're going to fall. So I've naturally picked Curly. He is the man when it comes to falling trees and stuff. Known as the woodsman, 18-year resident and third-generation logger, Timothy Curly Leach has been behind the saw for 30 years. Mary, she ain't afraid to get her hands dirty. I mean, she ain't scared of bear. She ain't scared of... Well, she ain't scared of the Sasquatch, for crying out loud. Whoa, you scared me. <laughs> hey, Mary. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to scare you. That's not true. <laughs> that looks like your yellow cedar pile's getting down there. It is. I've been burning fast as I can chip it. Yeah, right, right. Right now, people are collecting their firewood and that. They're pretty hot and heavy, so I'm going to take Mary with me. Give her some pointers and steer her in the right direction. That's a cute little saw. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a step up from the Barbie saw I was using. You don't need anything bigger than that anyway. I've just cut these rounds on the beach with it is all I've done. Uh -huh. I'm a little leery. You know, you read the box, and it says all the do's and don'ts and the chain kicking back at you and the bar and stuff. Very frightening. Maybe I watch too many scary B movies with chainsaws. <laughs> I want to uh... load up. In fact, Mary's anxieties are well founded. As professions go, none is deadlier than logging. There's snow in the forecast in the next couple days, so this is my chance to get out there. I need to go out there and learn these skills and get it right and do it now. Otherwise, it's going to be a long, cold winter. Nature is the most powerful force out here we have. If we don't maintain our trails, Mother Nature will overtake it, and you'll never find it again. I hate this one right here. This will be so nice to get this fixed. High on the hill behind their property, 11-year residents Hans and Timby Porter are fortunate enough to have a massive supply of firewood they call the blowdown. There we go. But keeping this reserve accessible all year round will require a substantial overhaul to their trail. 
and every time we go up there, our trail just keeps getting worse and worse. So we're going to try and fix that today. This is ridiculous. Oh my gosh, Hans. You made it. The things I do for you. Thank you, baby. Being able to get up to the blowdown is like supremely important. <laughs> Your access back and forth to your wood supply needs to be safe. When you run out of firewood, it's serious. What I'm thinking is we can take the ends that I've cut off and then put them in the mud hole and set part of that beam right up on top of it, use it for a bridge. I think that's pretty damn smart. For some of us out here in Port Protection who are getting a little bit older, Seems like our chores are getting a little bit more and more difficult. Is there a bottom to that? Anytime you have to go through shin deep muck to get to the job site, it just kind of takes a toll on you. May seem like a trail to you, but uh, for us, it's survival. Hey, that turned out pretty well, looky. 260 hey. pounds. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> Alaskan tested, wife approved. <laughs> the stairway to the mountaintop next. What do you think? I don't know. This is going to be a project. Having only put a dent into their battle with Mother Nature, the porters have yet to tackle the steepest section of their firewood trail, the lengthy incline to the blowdown. This is where it's bad. I know. Every step, man, you never know if the ground's just going to give way on you and you're going to slip in that stuff. In a temperate rainforest, the forest floor is largely composed of thick mosses carpeting centuries of decomposing deadfall, resulting in soggy, uneven, and often treacherous terrain. You know what? Maybe we can get some steps put in here. It looks like we're going to have a hell of a run of steps, though, huh? Well. It's all uphill from here on out. Over the years, I've learned that you got to take care of yourself. The winter season always makes everything harder, no matter what it is. Since Port Protection's beginning, the staple red meat has always been venison. I'm a little bit behind in my hunting this year, and a doe there could be crucial. I'll tell you, it's a lot of work to make it through the winter. Having had no success at two hunts earlier this season, 70-year-old Gary Mulberger is changing tack in his final effort to bag a deer before the snow falls. Well, it froze pretty hard last night. It looks like winter's here. The backpack's frozen. The weather might put kind of a kibosh to me here. It froze really hard last night. And so I'm going to have to maybe go in the timber there. The musk eggs are going to be froze, and everywhere I walk is going to be crunching. I'm just going to be telling them that I'm coming. So I have to get a different approach to this, and I'm just going to have to look and play it by ear. Gary puts 2.5 nautical miles between himself and civilization in order to better his chances of a successful deer hunt. You can't go today, Dropper. Sorry. Most of the deer are shot off that show their face on the road system there. Those are thinned out. They're gone. You have to get where they can't be seen from the road. You have to hunt those places out. Getting older now, and those miles are a little harder for me. I got a four-wheeler there. Sometimes I call it a scooter. The unique thing about the four-wheeler is that I can get up and off of the road where I can't go with the truck. Opens up new country to me. The four-wheeler, some places, can drive right up to the deer. I can winch it up, throw it on there, and I don't have to work as hard to get it. Well, here we go. Well, there's a lot of competition on the road. There's a lot of young guys there. They cover the ground pretty good. 
So I got to get off the beaten path to see where there is a deer. Uh-oh, something's the matter here. It feels like maybe the belt's slipping or something. When you're going to do what I got in mind here, there's a few tools that you need. But it's just like a lot of stuff. They don't make them like they used to, and you can't rely on them all the time. Uh-oh, something's the matter here. Ah, uh, gone. Miles from port protection, a malfunction in Gary Mulberger's ATV threatens to end his late season deer hunt before it's even begun. You can feel something that feels like maybe the belt's slipping or something. The motor turns up and don't go nowhere. I'm thinking the oil from the crankcases going into that other chamber. Sure enough, the oil's down. So somehow the engine oil is going into the chamber where the belt is. And so the belt is slipping. I know for a fact that this isn't something I'm going to fix right here or on the road here. I'm just going to have to come up with another plan. I guess I'll just go back to old school, get my rifle, and go put five or 10 miles on the old feet. That's the way I used to do it, hit the brush. Finding my way here in Port Protection has been a little bit of a challenge. Everybody here has been so helpful, and I am extremely thankful. It's made life quite a bit easier here. But I wouldn't have stayed if I didn't have the determination to. With the owner soon returning to her cabin, three-year resident Amanda McCarr has only three days to move into her houseboat, the Why Not? and make it a permanent home in port protection. I'm gonna freeze my ass off. But in order to stay warm during the cold nights in the water, Amanda's best bet for survival is an old-fashioned heat source. The Why Not has one diesel stove on it, but I gotta make room for a wood stove because my diesel stove isn't working. Try and get some of this stuff out of the way. Probably one of the most important things to figure out in the wintertime, keeping yourself warm. Without heat, you'll die. Oh. Another reason why you should oil up your rusty fasteners. I just busted the tip of my screwdriver. Sucky. I've called on my friend Sam Carlson to come over and help me plan out and install the wood stove. Yeah. I would say you have your work cut out for you. <laughs> and the sky is blue and the grass is green. Yeah. <laughs> when I stepped on board a man's houseboat, uh, it kind of brought back some memories because I, I spent a winter in one when I was in junior high. And I just remembered how cold it was. <laughs> Wow, yeah, you're going to need some heat. I mean, once you have heat, you'll have a totally different attitude change. <laughs> That'll be nice. You're going to want at least 12 inches from your wall, just for fire protection purposes. My biggest worry with this project is possibly burning the boat down. Fiberglass is highly flammable, and I'm going to put a fire source inside the boat. One of the inherent dangers in actually having a wood stove anywhere, you definitely have to have adequate fire protection. But the main thing is safety, safety first. Boats are kind of like trailer houses, confined spaces. You have to have a little extra fire protection. I do have faith in Sam and his capabilities. I attempted it earlier, but I broke my tip trying to get this. Oops, I thought maybe I could just pull it out. <laughs> Let's it, not it, it, do it, that. It, it felt like it would just come right out. I don't know what it's attached to. The wall. But when you have people coming over and just tearing pieces off of your home, it can be rather concerning. This is going to get covered with drywall, so you're not going to see any of this. 
Job done. Handle removed. Mm -hmm. It's a wee bit of a challenge. I've never actually installed a stove, a wood stove in a boat. Hopefully, we will be successful. Tree falling is a very dangerous, dangerous occupation. That tree can bite you back in a heartbeat, and you might not live to tell the story. This is the spot. Yeah, there's one right up here that I had picked out for you there. There's a lot of cedars up in there. 2.5 nautical miles east of Port Protection, seasoned logger Timothy Curley Leach has brought seven-year resident Mary Miller out in the road to teach her how to chop down a dead standing tree. I think I could handle it. I will give it her a shot. I carry my saw like Curly and look cool now. <laughs> Before I moved here, I've never used a chainsaw. I couldn't even lift them all for splitting rounds, but now I could swing it all day long and split that wood up. Yikes. <laughs> nice, easy one, though. Yeah, easy for you to say. <laughs> you know what the hell you're doing. You just acclimate to what you need to do to survive out here. Oh, I don't know. This is scary, Curly. I can't help it. Yeah, I think she's pretty nervous about it. She's a little gun shy of the chainsaws, which is a good thing. I'm just going to go, ah, I already know. They say if you're not scared, you know, you ain't got no business cutting trees. When operating a chainsaw, you got to remember that saw is not your friend. It's not going to watch out for you. You're going to cut flat into it like that. Good Lord. Yeah. OK. Chopping down a tree is dangerous business. As she works, Mary must keep an eye out for falling limbs, kick back from her saw, and last but not least, the tree itself falling in her direction. Boy, I don't know, Curly, if I feel safe. I'm going to lean over there going downhill with a chainsaw <laughs> running. Yeah, right. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're all right. It smells flooded. I smell gas. You smell gas? Yeah. Right. It needs you. There we Boy, I don't like it. I'll coach you through it, though. Go ahead. Put down your handlebars now. Get down and just let the saw go. It's kind of different watching somebody else cutting a tree. Usually, I'm on the end of the saw. You want that pointed right to the left of them alders. OK. Ah! You're all right. You're doing just fine. Don't freak. The, all I can think of is that tree's coming down on me. I'm going to roll down the hill, you know, all these things that could happen. There you go. Try that. I don't know about this stuff. Mary, you got to have your saw flat. As of right now, I'm scared to death of the thing. Uh, oh, God, Curly. You're fine. <laughs> You're doing just fine. Let me get back over here, and I'll kind of watch. Curly, it wants to go the other way. It's starting to move. You're fine. Don't panic. Just go ahead and cut. Keep going, Mary. Don't stop. Cut fast. <laughs> Cut fast. Keep going. Don't stop. Come on. Come on. Curly, it wants to go the other way. It's starting to move. Don't panic. Just go ahead and cut. Out in the Alaskan wilderness, first-time logger Mary Miller confronts her first dead standing tree, an intimidating 90-foot yellow cedar. Keep going, Mary. Don't stop. Get over here. <laughs> See? 
<laughs> you did it. Oh, man. <laughs> I did it. You Yay! did it. <laughs> Got an adrenaline rush going? God. I bet. My heart is pounding. <laughs> <laughs> when the tree finally came down, it was so many different emotions going through my head. I mean, it's like relief, it's down, you know? <laughs> You told me to cut fast, and the drops were coming down from the tree and hit me. It's like, oh, the son of a bitch. <laughs> you froze in your tracks. The expression on her face was pretty priceless. You know, first time even really running a saw period, you know, and to jump into cutting a tree, she did a good job. You know, I was pretty proud of her. Good Lord, that's more of a rush than dropping a deer, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Everything worked out OK. Everyone was safe. But now the hard part starts where I gotta saw them up, split them, and get it stacked. What makes a place like Port Protection really work is that we end up helping each other more than we're really aware of because it kind of becomes second nature. In order to reach their firewood supply, Hans and Timmy Porter are forced time and again to climb a muddy, slippery trail to the top of a mountain. I think these steps are going to be kind of involved, don't you? Well, I've always found that steps are always an uphill battle. <laughs> Making the soggy rainforest floor accessible sometimes requires experience and tools born of decades surviving the Alaskan bush. Hey, you made, made it. it. Better late than never. Living out here, we try to use all the resources that we can at our disposal. And one of the greatest resources I know is Bud. Look what you brought. Now we just got to do stairs. I've been helping Bud get wood for the last couple years, so I invited him to come up and help us so we can keep the wood flowing. Straight up and down almost. Slippery. Yeah. Straight up and down. <laughs> Gosh, I can't even stay up. Why don't we just put in an escalator? Yeah, right. Oh, we got lots of stuff to work with. I think that there is so much valuable information that the people in this village have. Finding out the little tricks and tips from people like Bud, it's huge to us. This is your fro. Yeah. And did you make that? Yes. That's pretty awesome, And lock branch and uh, rubber tires. The rubber compresses and it fires it down into the wood. Bud brought up a shake fro and a mallet. And these are some old-timey tools. And we'll do it the old-fashioned way. Bud's lightweight tools, however unassuming, have been essential to centuries of construction. OK, ready? Yep. The team makes the steps by placing the fro's blade against the log and hitting it with a mallet, creating precisely measured shake boards without the cumbersome aid of a modern mill. That's well, we have a I guess problem. We're done for today. The thing about making boards, the mallet that you use is going to break. It's just a matter of when. I ain't got nothing to swat it with, bro. I'm sorry about breaking your mallet, but I can build you a new one. We can, uh, let's go do it. All right. Let's do it. At a standstill till we get a new one. OK. Out here, it's the little things that throw you off, but it's always something. The best laid plans of mice and men, they can change. But you can't dwell on that. You got to roll with it and just say to yourself, well, you're just going to have to do it the hard way. After running into a belt issue with his ATV, 70-year-old Gary Mulberger pushes deep into the Alaskan bush to continue his doe hunt the old-fashioned way, alone and on foot. Well, you can see there's been deer all over here. There's tracks all over. Even at my age, I rely on my legs and hips and my body to take me where I want to go. And so that's how I'm going to hunt. One of the things about hunting on foot, you can go places where even the ATV can't go. There's another deer bed right here. Well, there's deer right there. They're living here. 
little luck I can sneak up on one. Well, he rubbed the out of this right here. There's a deer. You see it? It's a dope. deer all over in this country here. Well, he rubbed the out of this right here. Four miles into his trek, hunter Gary Mulberger has found himself in a closed logging road, abundant with deer sign. There's a deer. You see it? It's a dope. There she goes. Yeah, well, was standing right there. I had a, you know, dead shot, but you, you can see you can't get here with a four-wheeler. It's hell for me to pack one out of here. <laughs> you know? But anyway, that's give me a little charge. Um, we'll go up this way. There was one here. I say there's more. Try this one more time. It's pretty hard living out here. Uh, Back in business. Nice, you guys. I found that it's a lot easier to get things accomplished when you work together. With a new mallet assembled, the porters and neighbor Bud Baker finished constructing shake boards and stakes using old-fashioned tools and the natural resources around them. Six, seven, eight of them now. All that's left is to construct the stairs and pray they'll hold. Wow, those are heavy. Must be hemlock. Hemlock. Yeah. Ain't going nowhere. It'll be there for a while. For Bud to stop up and help us, this neighbor helping neighbor helping neighbor that makes this community work, it seems like a lot of people pay it forward. Those are some nice looking boards, they girl. They are nice looking boards. That's come along so well. We're working together to achieve something that's going to benefit us, and we try to do it with love and compassion for each other. That's really what it's all about for us. You get a project, go to work, have a good time, get her done, call it a day. Just about right? Yeah. Another one just about right, bud? Oh, come on. Boy, these are some nice steps. Look at this, you guys. This is huge. We won't be mud up to her neck. Or yeah. anything else. <laughs> or anything else. <laughs> this is so cool. Hey, there's holes out there you could lose a small kid in. If you really want a taste of personal freedom and just all around self-sufficiency, nothing quite like owning your own home. At this stage of the game, for Amanda, in, in her life, it's definitely going to be a struggle to, you know, get things whipped into shape. But that builds character. With days remaining before her move, Amanda McCarr and her friend Sam Carlson are scrambling to build a wood-burning stove to help heat the 33-year-old's new houseboat during the winter chill. The Why Not is my very first residence, so it's pretty important to me to make sure that all these projects are done properly. While Amanda fireproofs the walls of her houseboat, Sam constructs the wood stove out of salvage materials. Amanda, she knows that I have skills with making things from scrap, and it's always good to be able to share that knowledge. I lived on my boat when I was 16 and a half, I had lots of help. There's no way in hell I could claim that I didn't have lots of help. But there were enough old timers around, crusty old farts that were more than willing to just tell you, this is how you do it. <laughs> Time to cut some sheetrock. 25 and 3 quarters. So I feel pretty intimidated by my wood stove. I don't want to catch anything on fire, burn somebody else's house down, or put anybody else's lives in jeopardy. 
What this does is it creates a gap between the wall and the sheetrock so that things have a chance to keep cool. Ta-da! So nothing catches on fire. Say it's about factory perfect. Always nice when the plan comes together. Take this over to a man is and hopefully she'll have a hot boat by tomorrow. Ahoy! Ahoy! Special delivery. And there you go. Got it. Got it. Looks Ooh. great, Sam. All right, yeah, that looks great. I hired I just, the right man for the job. Be, and I'd like to see that at least that far from this wall. Uh huh. Oh, shh. <laughs> see, we're off. Special delivery. And there you go. Got it. Got it. Looks great, Sam. With the new wood stove assembled, Sam returns to Amanda's houseboat to complete the installation. I'd like to see that at least that far from this wall. Uh -huh. But he discovers a glaring issue. Oh, shh. <laughs> see, we're off. We can't use this as the middle. Stove pipe's actually going to be over here. Having failed to take into account the placement of the ceiling joist, Sam and Amanda will now have to shift the stove's installation one foot to the right. I don't generally drop plans or schematics. I just have this thing in my head. Generally, there's always modifications on the fly while you're doing the job. So uh, I just hope there's no big stumbling block. Good, I hope this works. I can't believe we're cutting a hole in my perfectly fine roof. <laughs> I hear Amanda down below going, I cannot believe somebody is cutting a hole in the roof of the boat. Uh, you go, go ahead and push on it. There you go. Sorry. That said, uh, didn't get me. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> There's been a trend in Alaska, people moving out of the bush and in, you know, back into the cities. And it's nice to see young people that are hanging in there, tough, learning how to do everything right. I think that you're good. Okay. Yeah, I think you're good. That's fine. I came to Port Protection because of a boy. That relationship did not work out, and I decided to stay. This place has captivated me so. There are so many things that keep me here. The energy, the people, the lifestyle, and I can't see wanting to leave it anytime soon. I think it's time to uh, christen the stovepipe. I've hunted deer for two weeks at a time without getting one. Coming home empty handed. Hunter Gary Mulberger has hiked four miles into the Alaskan bush down closed off logging roads in hopes of finally bagging a deer for his winter store. All you got to do is just make a little bit of noise, and them deer will evade you. They circle around behind you, and you never see them again. So, winter isn't what gets you, it's not being prepared for winter. That's what will get you. I need a certain amount. If I don't catch one today, this is my last chance for this year. I just kind of have a little feeling for where I am and different direction. I, I'm switching directions all the time, but I'm just going by the deer trail. I don't know how many more years I'll be able to do this, but I can give the young guys a little run for their money just because of experience. They make it tough, don't they? But there's deer all over in this country here. 
This is fresh, it ain't frozen. Well, there's deer here. There's all kind of sign there. They're rubbing all over here. This is as good a spot as any, maybe better than some. You just have to keep keep trying. Eventually, one will make a mistake, and hopefully, I won't. They're living here, so something's ahead of us right here. It's pretty brushy, but there's still a few open spots. She's running. It's pretty brushy, but there's still a few open spots. Did you see it? After three hours traveling on foot, 70-year-old Gary Malberger finally has a deer in his sights. She's running. I'm gonna put her down there. She's dead. It's a big doe. Wasn't a good shot, went down. This is what I wanted. This is my Christmas present right here, so thank you, Lord, for this deer. The old way is the good way for me. I'm in pretty good physical condition because I walk a lot and what I eat. I was really surprised I could still run. You want to dispatch these deer as quick as possible. The blood is the first thing to spoil. And once you get the bacteria going, then you don't have too long. If you can get them bled out good, you'll have some meat that'll last longer. I got to get moving here. It's getting darker, and I got a ways to walk here before I'd be back to transportation. When you get out in the woods there off the road, way out there, you got to figure out what you're going to do once you get a deer. Yeah, boy, I wish I had that four-wheeler right now, because I could just put it on the back, and it'd be all done. But it's broke down as it is. I got to make a pack out of this thing and be the mule here. Good thing my name is Muleburger. In the old days, my brother taught me how to make a backpack out of this deer by toggling the front legs. I got to these legs skinned out to make a toggle out of them. So you take it like this, and you put your foot through there, pull it on through, and then there's your toggle. That holds that one. You take the other one, shove the foot through, toggle it over. Well, now you know why I wear a red coat, because this one's going to turn red pretty quick. It's not the easiest thing to do, but since I didn't have my four-wheeler or my truck, that's what I'm going to do is pack it on my back the old school way. I kind of proved something to myself today. I haven't done this for a long time. I can shoot a deer, put it on my back, go through the woods, bring it back home. I'm 70 years old, and I still could put that deer on my back and, and pack it. I look in the mirror, and there's this old guy there, but uh, I don't see me there. I've, I'm still a young guy. There's a lot of things that we do out here to survive and make our lives more comfortable. A lot of it's very dangerous, and you get yourself in some pretty scary predicament. 
But you got to learn because that's the only way you're going to not be relying on other people. On the road, Curly and Mary return to the tree they fell the day before. Why is it going to be so cold? It makes everything twice as exhausting. Yeah, the forecast calls for the snow to be falling pretty heavy here coming up this whole next week. So it's really important to get some good hot burning wood. Me toes is froze. OK, you want to flip that over, Mary. There you go. You got it now. Sorry, Curly, have you having to babysit. No, that's all right, hell. You got to learn. When teaching Mary how to do this, I kind of feel a little bit responsible, you know, taking her under my wing and that, you know, just pick up some general pointers that are going to keep her safe out there. Well, here we go. OK, let's do it. God, he just make it look so, so easy, Curly. Someday I will be that good. I'm fairly lucky to have Fred like Curly. It's just huge that people that have been here, how much they can help you in your day-to-day -day life. Man, this thing weighs a ton. Beautiful. The number one thing is it'll probably give her more confidence in herself about going out and actually doing it on her own. Keep coming. Perfect. OK, now do I go this way or? Get it in the cut first. Before you gas right. it up, throttle up. Yeah. I'll always be afraid of the saw and respect it. Very dangerous tool, and you must have a lot of respect for it and know how to use it or don't be messing around with it. I'm glad that Curly took the time out to take me out to do that because I feel a lot more comfortable with that saw now. By the end of the day, I was, you know, had a lot more confidence. And it's just one more step in me able to conquer all these fears and do these things myself. I can see Mary going out, and I can see her really getting into this tree fall and stuff. You know, I'm, I think she'll be really good at it, and pretty soon she'll be having all kinds of fun. You won't be able to take her saw away from her. There is an end in sight for Brock making work today. Yeah. Good day, all in all. Oh, I'm whooped. Port protection endures not by modern advances, but by those who look to the past to preserve their future. Watch this cool knot to start it off with. You ready? Sometimes it's better to go with old school technology. We can learn a lot from our old timers. That's how we've learned a lot ourselves, by other people's experiences. If I can tie a knot and win your heart, it's been a good day. There is faith in time-honored methods a determination to keep a rich history alive. The old timers, those are the guys that they're known here. And they continually come home with the deer. They don't whine about it. They'll go there and hunt until they get what they need. And that's just how it is. The boy. Each individual has a respect for those who came before and an eagerness to forge a clear path for those who will someday take their place. Super sweet, Sam. It's nice to know that we still have that pioneering spirit, because once we lose that, it's game over. I think that the world would become a very stale place if there weren't pioneers. This is Port Protection. <laughs>